that you would rend the heavens and come down. I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen. Stir up your power, O oh Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our order of baptismal service today for Rodney Van Dorn is going to be on page 268 in your hymnal. I'd like to invite the baptismal party to come up and join me at the, alt, at the uh, baptismal font for Rodney's baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever is baptized and believes, will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of the whole world that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Rodney, how are you to be named? 
the full name. Outstanding. Rodney Van Doren, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your breast to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the King. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world to the flood. Yes, according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls and all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Rodney according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, will be drowned in God. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them and support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and in love for their neighbor. Rodney, Rodney and Judith, is it your intention to serve Rodney as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and do this faithful work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear the gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them who brought them. Jesus thought he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for as such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and he blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taught by our Lord Jesus and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Rodney, the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Rodney, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Rodney, do you desire to be baptized?
Rodney Howard Van Doren III. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Gorgeous. Don't try to harder. Don't try to bit it. Don't try to bit it. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace and life everlasting. Amen. Rodney, receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom. Yeah. In holy baptism, God has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an heir with us of the treasures of heaven and one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gift, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. I'd like the entire family to raise your hand. Rodney, right in the middle. And let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you, graciously preserve and enlarge your family, and have granted Rodney the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, that you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to you, Rodney, peace be with you. Amen. Welcome to the family of God, brother. Outstanding. This, this whole situation was really, really great, and it just goes to show you how important family and especially fathers are in these young men's lives. Rodney came to me early on, and he said, Pastor, I really want to be baptized. I really want to be baptized. I said, okay. And he said, um, but Dad, you know, Dad just doesn't know, or Dad doesn't understand, doesn't feel like. So I just caught Rodney and Caroline one day, and I said, Rodney, they're both Rodney, by the way. <laughs> I said, Rodney, we got to get this done, brother. And what does Rodney say? Yes, sir. And he made it happen. So thank you so much for being the kind of father this boy needs. Thank you for being insistent on getting this done. You made that happen because your faith has made you well, and you really do understand this. And I cannot wait to return you this spring with all your classmates. And it's going to be a great year. And I just love you guys to death. And I'm so happy for you. We have a great year. Stick around after church. We're going to have Jesus. Rodney, that baptism. Rodney Van Doren, everybody, thank you. Thank you. You made this on your seat, guys. Good job. Yes, you made it. Yes, please.
The Old Testament reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Behold, your King is coming to you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Epistle reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now the birth of Christ Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man, was unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophets. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Joseph woke from sleep. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Christian, what do you believe?
Director of Christian Education, Mr. Dirk Ford, and any children present at this time to come forward for our children's message portion of the service. Well, hello, Gordon. How are you doing, pal? <laughs> I think Come someone's on. getting excited for Santa. <laughs> yeah. Gordon. Yeah, he's coming soon, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Gordon. pal. Come on. All right. Here we go. All right. Good morning, guys. So we're going to talk about symbols this morning, some of the symbols we see around in Christmas time. So, do you guys see any symbols? No? Yeah? What symbols do you see? Okay, so we have candles. What do candles talk about in, in Christmas time? What? Oh, we have Christmas tree. Oh, we're going to get to that. For candles, we have lights in the dark. That's a good one. Poinsettias, because there's something that bloom in the winter when it's dark. We have them in, we'll have them soon. I'll have them next week. But you said it earlier, Christmas trees. We're going to talk about Christmas trees tonight or today. Do you guys like regular Christmas trees, the real ones with the sap and the needles? Or are you guys like in the, the fake ones? Are you real? Do you want to be real ones? Okay, yep, yep. So I always grew up with the real ones. I really love the real ones, but you know, oh, oh yeah. But the new ones, the new electric ones that they've got, they're really really neat. Some of them can like actually shape how they actually form. Some of them can go like short and fat and really wide, and then like you push a button and right. And then we've got the other ones that change the different colors of the lights. You guys like the colored lights or the white lights? You like the colored ones? You like the white ones? Mm -hmm. That you can change all the different lights on there? No? Yeah, it's really cool. Like, Gordon has ours at home. He's got the button pushed where it does the white lights and the colored lights. So we have a strobe effect in our house. It's crazy right now. But talking about Christmas trees, Christmas trees were a symbol. Do you guys know the history of our Christmas trees, where they came from and all that? No? Well, guess what? I'm going to educate you today. So Christmas trees were, were originally first done in Germany, and what was really cool is on Christmas Day, you would go and chop out a tree in your front yard. Now, what's really kind of crazy about that is they would hang it in their house upside down. Why would they hang it upside down? What's with the shape of a Christmas tree? What, what's the shape? Triangle, what does it have to do with Jesus? What does, it, what does triangle have to do with Jesus? Well, we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So if we have in the shape of the Christmas tree, the nice triangle, the Trinity. Now, does a Christmas tree lose its needles? I mean, constantly, but it doesn't ever go brown, right, unless you, like, kill it. It's not one that loses its leaves in the fall and then it grows them back in the spring, right? It's called an evergreen. Yeah, an evergreen because it's always green. Just like the new life that we have through Jesus and the hope that we have through him, it's always green. Even when it's dark and kind of cold out, we have the greenness of it. We're going to go even crazier for a second. They didn't have lights back then. So what did they put in the tree? Focus. Candles. You're like, Miss Yurik, that sounds really dangerous. Candles and a Christmas tree? Well, a couple of things. The Christmas tree was fresh from outside, so it's not like you're going to light it on fire. Number two, it probably had some snow on it. You're not going to light that on fire. And number three, the lights, as we talked about earlier, are helping remind us of us being light in this dark time and in this dark world that doesn't know who Jesus is. Yeah, okay, go ahead. That's it. But then we've got all the ornaments. And then what do you guys like to put on the top of your trees? What do you like? An angel or a star? Do you guys all put that too? Sometimes there's a Santa. Our star has got a crazy strobe effect on the ceiling. So literally, if you come to our house, it's like a dance party right now. It's crazy. But those are also to remind us of things that happened at Christmas and Advent, right? We have the giant star. 
which led who? The wise men. That's right. And then we have the angel who told the wise men. And who else did they tell? Mary and Joseph. So if you go home and look at your house, you have a lot of cool Christmassy stuff. But I bet you didn't know it had a lot more meaning. It has deeper things in it. When we talk about poinsettias, the evergreen, and then they bloom in the winter, we have all these really cool things that help point us to who Jesus is and to remind us of Jesus in this world. Now, as you guys go home and see your stuff, maybe play around with some of your toys and some of the lights that are in here as we have our dance party at home, just remember, a baby was born, but it wasn't just a baby. It was something more. He was something more. That's right. He was our Savior. Not just our Savior, but the world's Savior. This wasn't just a boy. This was Jesus. God, human flesh, come to die for us. This is a gift we could never imagine or understand. We're so thankful that he did come. Because we have the greatest gift that you can imagine. Now, before you guys go, I've got some gifts, but we're going to pray real quick first. All right? We're going to give those out. But if you guys would pray with me, let's go talk to Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, this Christmas season, as we decorate our houses, we put up so many things that help remind us of you. Help us, Lord, to share who you are with our Christmas decorations and our Christmas spirit. Help us, Lord, in this dark world to be Christmas lights. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I have a pin for each of you, and you guys can go back. There's one. There's one. There's one. There you go. You don't want one for everyone? There you go.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our gospel proclamation comes from the epistles to the church in Rome and serves as the basis of our theme for this fourth Sunday in Advent, trustworthy and true. When you know, you know. I have seen this phrase so many times when it's used in pictures, movies, plays, and conversations between friends. I usually have no clue what they're talking about, but when everyone seems to know, it's very intriguing to me. So if it's a picture, I study it copiously as I'm visual to see what visual cues may reveal what everybody knows. When it's a movie, I just wait to see how it's revealed later as the plot thickens. When it's in a play, I usually pick it up in the first act, sort of wait for it to be alluded to in the second, and then satisfyingly appreciate its final consummation in the third. But that's only if I could find Mike and Ike during the intermission to help my hunger pain between friends, and I happen to be the unwanted appendage to the inner circle, which I usually am. I just go full-on rude and ask the unthinkable question, no, I don't know. What? That's typically met with eye rolls or shifty glances back and forth or just plain incredulous stares at the buffoon that doesn't know. I'll let you all in on a couple of things. I am an ambassador for all the ignorant ones because I know most people do not know. And I know that they are ignorantly standing there but have no courage to look like a buffoon. Now I'll let you in on the second secret. I don't care if I look like a buffoon. That much is probably obvious to all of you that know me well. I don't know, the last thing I want is to wallow in my ignorance. So I ask, I educate myself, and then I determine if it was worth knowing at all. But the truth is, I never know. On this fourth Sunday in Advent, Paul tells us, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, what we need to know. In a creedal statement, if I have ever seen one, I can assure you, it's exactly what you need to know. First off, Paul brings us the message of the advent of our God, Jesus, with authority. Real, authorized, defined, distinct, clearly laid out, no denying his authority, authority. This man has the commission for the mission of telling the world what they need to believe to live in this world and the next. It starts with the gospel truth of our Lord. Now, the gospel truth, that's a term you do hear in movies trying to show the triumph of the individual against overwhelming odds. The story you're about to hear is the gospel truth, as if using this verbiage draws you in and suspends your disbelief. My favorites are when they start with their childhood, like the Louis Zamperini story, or the story of Ray Charles, or any number of famous figures that tugged on our heartstrings because of their triumph in the face of overwhelming odds. In those opening scenes, we see glimpses of what is to come, and like prophets, we predict that what they're revealing to us is that this Seeds for their success were sown long before they were famous. We do that at school all the time. We quickly identify kids that have that extra special something that can lead to church work or predict their capacity to be productive members of society. If we just continue with the positive influence of education, stable family, and spiritual growth. They will often come back to us and share that it started 
with a word of encouragement that started their path from these humble beginnings to greater gains. How grateful for their spiritual formation right here. While we are not prophets, we're so excited when we predicted correctly. They always knew they were going to do great things. Today, Paul points out that there were prophets in his case, and they prophesied the one great thing we celebrate in the season of Advent, the coming of our God. Promise through actual prophets recorded in the prophecies of the Old Testament and even testified to in the star. That God, the Father's Son, our Savior, would come. And indeed, he did in the person and the work of Jesus our Christ. Now, it's no surprise to any of you that attend my Bible studies that university history professors and grad students are denying the historicity of Christ in the world again. Nothing new. Every couple of years, there's always some idiot that comes up with the notion that Jesus was a myth, completely ignorant of the historical, archaeological, and geographical evidence that proves he was, in fact, a historical person. So that gives rise to a lot of people in the church that want to talk about the evidence to apologetics to defending the faith that will help people see this evidence. What's shocking to me now is how now there are people that actually call themselves Christians that are denying that Jesus came to earth incarnate in the flesh. That he apparently appeared as an apparition or a ghost or a seismic massive hallucination event or some nonsense as such. Reading today's epistle alone should dispel any such notion, as well as the abundance of texts that verify the incarnate, in the flesh presence of Jesus in our world. To be or not to be, that is the question for Christianity. Jesus either lived as Scripture said he did, born of a virgin, died on the cross, and undeniably risen from the dead, or our faith is entirely in vain. Any attempt to water that down, marginalize it with modern thought or philosophy, or challenge the very laws of biology simply fails to erase that which cannot be wiped from the face of the earth. The reality of Christianity simply cannot be denied. For we were appointed like Paul for such a time as this, to be set apart from the world with the truth that came in the flesh and will come again. So often we stand out simply because Christ stands in with us. The spirit of holiness, better known as the Holy Spirit to us today, makes that distinction clear as he makes his dwelling in us through the proclamation of the word and proceeding from Christ himself. We know this from, through, and because of Christ alone. It can only happen through this man who is the way, the truth, and the life by which no one can ascend to the Father except through him. You do not have to worry about him because we didn't and don't have to seek him. Because as John 15, 16 says, he sought us, and he called us, and he chose us to be his dwelling place, earning that place in our hearts with his willingness to suffer and die upon the cross, show his power and dominion over death, and one day come again to take us home to live with him forever. That's how we know we are his beloved. He loved us enough to die in excruciating pain to have us as his own. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. Indeed, what a friend we have, Jesus. 
the hymn of the Father's love begotten. What a glorious text that says, Oh, that birth forever blessed, when the virgin full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, promised in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expected. Let creation praise its Lord evermore, evermore. In this hymn, these words were Aurelius Prudentius Clemens' creed of the fourth century, showing the true expanse of the endless love of our Father God has for us. Loving us so much, he called us by inviting us and converting us from the sinful shell that was bound to hell to give us new bodies, baptized, catechized, and ready to rise eternally with him. Where all who have Christ in them will live as a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches waving in their hands and crying with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. We are the white-robed saints of God now, even though not yet. We know the promise of hope that awaits us in the everlasting city of Jerusalem that comes down the bride of Christ to be our dwelling place as promised by God, our Father. Because said, God said, Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down, for this is trustworthy and true. Now, may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Amen. We rise to the offertory hymn. Please be seated as we receive our tithes and offerings and for the prayer of the church.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord for faith and humility to receive the virgin-born Son of God and the signs where he is promised to be found, his holy word and sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. For the apostolic gospel and its ministers, that the name and resurrection of Jesus would be proclaimed among all the nations, including among us to bring about the obedience of faith in every place. Let us pray to the Lord. For all couples engaged to be married, that they may come to their wedding day chastely and without fear, shame or disgrace, that they may know that Emmanuel is the one who saves his people from their sins, and that God would clothe all brides and grooms in the forgiveness of Christ, by which, all can stand before him cleansed and confident of his blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nations and its rulers, that the Lord would bear patiently with this land despite its tiresome flattery and unbelief, that God would clear away all empty shows of piety, and that he would renew genuine faith in the virgin's son, that his return may not be a sign against him. Let us pray to the Lord. For penitent hearts, that God would preserve us from temptation and abuse of his name by seeking our own way. And instead, move us to confess our sins and rejoice in Jesus our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those in any need, including the Overn family, Kathy, Dawn, Sue, Karen, Larry, Rick, Jean, Alfred, Libby, Carol, and Neil and Barb, let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful, that they may celebrate the birth of Christ by hearing the word, singing his praises, and receiving his body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is truly Lord and ruler of the house of Israel. With the Holy Spirit, you spoke to Moses out of the burning bush and gave the law in terror to test your ancient people, that the fear of you would be before them. As Moses stretched out his arm at your word to bring Israel out of bondage, and as he stood in the breach against your wrath, so you have given Christ to redeem us with his arms outstretched on the wooden cross. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. For you live and reign ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Would you please rise for the service of the sacrament and the preface to Holy Communion? The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let 
us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly me, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the very promised Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in the remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Would you please rise for the nunc dimittis, the closing thanksgiving salutation and benediction and grace. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
brief announcements, welcome up our guests and visitors, and get you out to your cookie plates. We got cookie plates out there waiting, right? Yes, yes. Three extra boxes, so if you get out there fast enough, you can grab one of the extra boxes. But please, no running, walk quickly. No running, just walk quickly. All right, so first things first, we want to make sure we welcome our first time guests and visitors with a little token of appreciation for coming and joining us today in the season of the advent of our God. Over here in Loki's section, any first time guests and visitors in Loki's section? Is he sleeping over there? Is he sleeping? <laughs> Are you sleeping over there, Loki? You look pretty relaxed, dude. <laughs> hey, if there's room in the pew, go for it, right? There you go. Okay, over here to Gunner's section. First time guests and visitors in Gunner's section. All right. Over here, first time guests and visitors in Stephen's section. First time guests and visitors in Stephen's section. And then over here in Mark's section. Wonderful. Where are you guys visiting us from? No kidding. Welcome to America. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> Here we go. Got a little card, a little pen there for you. Everything is yours to keep. If you don't mind filling out the card for us, I'd love to tell you more about the ministry while you're in town. And may I have your names? Jeff? Jeff and Jax. I love it. I lo Jackson, just like Jacksonville. No? <laughs> very good, very good. Welcome, Jeff and Jax. Nice to have you guys with us today. What a blessing to worship with you and commune with you today. I love it. Very good. Did I miss anybody in my haste to get over to Jackson's? Oh, wonderful, in the back here. Where are you visiting us from, folks? I love it. What part of Ohio? What happened to my people? Oh, he's behind me. <laughs> Come on, Ken, keep up. <laughs> Cincinnati, really? Big Joe Burrow fans? Like your boy, don't you? Yep, yep, I love it. I love it. Great quarterback, great guy. I love it. I love it. So, oh, what do you think? I'm talking to new guests and visitors. You have to wait. <laughs> uh, so we have a little uh, uh, information there for you. If you don't mind filling out the card for us while you're snowboarding down here, we'd love for you to make this your place to worship and grow spiritually. The pen, the cross, and everything in the bag is yours to keep. If you can just leave that sheet behind for us, that would be lovely. Tell me your name. Ken and Carol. That'll be easy to remember. Thank you. Ken and Carol, make sure you make Jeff, Jackson, Ken, and Carol feel welcome today, folks, as they're here with us for the holidays. Tim, you look like you're ready to go. Uh, Ken and Carol, as a Nebraskan, you're welcome for Zach Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just from school, uh, a big congratulations and welcome to the faith family. Church side of things to Rodney and Isaiah last night, it's always great to see our students get baptized. I think that's six students this year with maybe more to come. Um, also, just updates from school. I did receive word this morning that uh, Bob received his call papers in the mail yesterday, so he is officially now in his prayerful consideration of his call to be a middle school teacher here. And in the last meeting, the school board elected to go ahead and pursue a second kindergarten class, so we are now pursuing tracking down a, a hopefully young kindergarten teacher as well for next year. So if you have any connections out there, of Lutheran teachers in the world, we would love to know about it because they are few and far between um, these days. So if you know of somebody, please let me know and we can add them to our list as we pursue a second kindergarten class. Um, the Lord continues to bless this ministry um, and we are just very, very thankful for that. Yeah, I mean, we want to strike while the iron's hot, while they're freezing their butts off up north. We want to let them know how beautiful it is in Florida right now, right? That's the key. Don't We can't do this in July. That won't work. We have to do it in January, all right? Very important. Thank you, Tim, for coming and, on. And again, a, a big thank you for, for the ministers that are our teachers over there for continuing to live out their faith and model it. And I think that is a big reason why the, the Holy Spirit continues to work through them and we see our students coming into the church Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Principal Leach. Appreciate that. Your offering envelopes are in the back. If you don't pick up your offering envelopes, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Pastor Kappel is going to visit you with your offering envelopes at a very inconvenient time for you. So grab your now and save that uncomfortable answer to the door at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And Pastor says, here's your envelope. <laughs> so grab those, take those home, make sure you got them. That, and I also can tell who hasn't been in church by who hasn't picked up their offering envelopes. So that gives me a chance to follow up on you and make sure you. So if you see a friend 
that you know hasn't been in church and they live next door to you, they live in your neighborhood, grab them and deliver them yourself and say, I just thought I'd save you a visit from Pastor because he noticed you weren't there. <laughs> so we want to make sure you're getting those, but we also want to make sure we're staying connected to you, and that's one of those that gives you an extra chance to celebrate you and have a little extra time with you on the fly. Any other announcements? The good of the church, the good of the church, the community I may be neglecting? Mr. Yurt? Yes, uh, no Bible study next Sunday because what is Sunday? Christmas. So he's just coming in for lessons and carols on Sunday morning. Remember, none of you are Saturday, folks. But normally on Saturday, we worship at 5 o'clock. We will not be worshiping at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. We'll be worshiping at 7 and 11 o'clock. Remember, 7 o'clock is candlelight without communion. 11 o'clock is candlelight with communion. Uh, if you want to come to the 7 o'clock, if you insist on it, it is going to be packed in here. Come about 15, 20 minutes early to make sure you can get your normal seat if you're worried about that. Otherwise, you might be sitting in the courtyard, or you might be sitting in the hallway, or you might be sitting in overflow seating and simulcasted in the gym. All right, We don't know how we're going to handle everyone this year, but it's going to be crazy. So get here early so at least you guys can get your normal seat and enjoy your Christmas celebration. Or just come at 11 o'clock with Marcy and me, have communion with us, and it'll be lovely. It'll be lovely. All right. Any other announcements to go to the church for the community I may be neglecting? Seeing none, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.